Why are they important? So food chains are important so that we could predict how impacts to our ecosystem will influence all species. Humans have the strongest impact on ecosystems, unfortunately. Um, and so we have to be responsible and consider how this is going to affect species. Even the smallest change can have this cascade effect. Um, so an example is in the 1800s, um, not that this was a small change, uh, sea otters were hunted to near extinction. Look at those cute little guys. Um, and that little guy is munching on his snack. That is a sea urchin. Sea urchins are the main food of sea otters. So because the sea otter populations decreased in that ecosystem, the sea urchins increased because that was a food source of sea otters. Well, now there's not enough sea otters to eat those urchins. Uh, the kelp forests then decreased since we saw an increase in sea urchin. It's our food source, so there's less kelp. Species dependent on kelp then went ahead and decreased as well since their food source decreased. So because of one event, it had a cascading effect on everything else. It affected the ecosystem. In addition, uh, food chains allow us to trace movement of materials through an ecosystem. It's important to know what we're consuming. We saw through that video that it is a recycling of nutrients that occurs in our ecosystem through energy conversion means. And so what we consume is very much dependent on what's going on in our ecosystem. What I'm showing you here is an example of a neurotoxin being accumulated via different trophic levels to the point to where it gets to us. This is very important. It's an effect called bioaccumulation, which I'm going to teach you guys. So methylmercury, it's a neurotoxin. It's going to be um, a toxic substance to the nervous system if consumed at um, high enough levels. Not good for us, not good for organisms. <clears throat> methylmercury is absorbed by algae uh, and the plankton in ocean ecosystems. Uh, and it biomagnifies as it moves up the food chain. So here I'm showing you the amount of methylmercury, that neurotoxin, in these producers. And as it moves up trophic levels, let's go to some consumers here. I can actually see that red dot has gotten increased. Well, let's go to a secondary consumer. This guy has biomagnified, increased the methylmercury in that ecosystem to the point to when it gets to humans, that dot grows these more upper level consumers quite large, even though it was at a small level at a lower trophic level in that pyramid. This is called bioaccumulation. Okay, so some definitions there. Just to reiterate, the bioaccumulation is the accumulation of chemicals in an organism, such as methylmercury that I discussed. Um, we don't want to have high rates of that neurotoxin or any toxin in our system uh, when it creates damage. <clears throat> And biomagnification has to do with increasing the concentration of a substance in tissues of an organism. Enough levels of that substance in that food chain will increase at higher levels. I do want to point out, I had a very interesting question from a student one semester. She asked me, um, what about vegetarians? What if you bypass the different trophic levels? So we're going from producer to primary consumer to secondary consumer to tertiary to humans. What if you bypass, and not to forget this cute little guy here also, being that consumer, what if you just bypass all those trophic levels and go directly from tertiary consumer, for instance, to a producer? Not to forget the concept of biomass, we still need to consume the same energy consumption slash biomass in order to survive. So I'm not going to eat just one kelp instead of one large fish. If I'm going to do kelp, I got to do multiple kelp. The biomass is the same. So you're still consuming large portions of that methylmercury. Exactly? Is it exactly related to the same amount as you increase trophic levels? I can't answer that, but I can tell you that it's going to be enough of that neurotoxin as well to instill damage to the system. <clears throat> 